All right, let's talk about CD side dust two for a second. So, whenever you're on a CD side on any map, you want to make sure that you're coordinating with the people that you're playing with on the sites, so that you can support each other. Like one of the worst ways that you can play is by playing individually on each site. For example, say you're playing two guys A, and one of the guys is playing long, and one of the guys is playing cat. This isn't that great because they can't, they don't, they have no way to support each other. This guy can't, you know, this guy can't flash for his cat teammate. And the cat teammate can't flash for the long teammate. If you're playing, you want to play together. So like, it, it's most common to play too long just because of the fact that if you give up long, you're giving them way too much space. So the two A guys usually will play long and there'll be like a rotator. That, there'll be a guy mid who rotates between A and B as he sees fit. And uh, his job is he can hold flashes for long like this. So, but I'm just going to talk about how everybody plays and I'm going to start at A. Generally, it's... Generally, you have one guy who's devoted to long. He's either playing in the corner with him, maybe an op, or he's playing in pit with a rifle. Uh, it really depends on his spawn. You don't really want to... Like, if the devoted long guy has a really shitty spawn, you don't want him to try and get to pit if it's risky, just because you don't you don't want him to get, like, flashed, or you want him to get picked crossing the pit. So if that's the case, then he can just stay at the corner. But ideally, what he wants to do is he wants to spot long for a second, especially if his spawn's not that great. He wants to spot it. And if they're throwing any nades over, then you can kind of... <laughs> it's obviously like a telegraph that they're going to be coming long. And basically, like, if there's a long corner smoke, it's a little bit easier for him because he can uh, kind of maneuver around the smoke and spot if they're coming. If there's no smoke here and they're coming out long dry, it's a little... It's less common, but it's still possible. Like, normally they'll at least throw a flash over so you get an idea of what's happening, but he wants to coordinate. And his other teammate normally wants to be playing back here, at least. Not necessarily to watch Cap, but just so he's far enough to where he can throw pot flashes for the people coming out long. So, like, whether this guy's in pit or he's at long corner, uh, he just wants to, he doesn't necessarily want to fight at first, he just wants to jiggle in and out for a second. And the moment he sees people that are, the moment he sees people coming out of long doors, like, he sees one, two guys just starting to come out, he wants to, uh, like, one, two, maybe even just the first guy. Like, if he sees, once, as soon as he sees the first guy coming out of long doors, generally they don't send all five long, because it's not a great setup, uh, as I'll explain in a second, but... If he sees like even like the first guy coming out of long doors, he wants to call for a flash with his teammates. It's a really easy pop flash. Just give it a little run through like that. It's an awesome pop flash. It's gonna blind the shit out of all these people coming out of long. And then this guy can peek and take fights. And you want to have your timing right. That's why you want to like you want to call for the flash as soon as the first guy comes out because by the time the flash pops, this, the first guy will already be decent and decently enough out, and the second guy will just be coming out. So the flash will hit them both, and he'll get a chance to get two easy kills that way. Uh, now this really depends on how many people are coming out, but if if this is a rifler, he can take the fight uh, as much as he wants, but he doesn't want to peek too wide because there's a chance there could be a third guy in the doors that isn't going to get flashed. So he just wants to peek out wide enough, like just wide enough, so that he can like take the fight with the two guys that are coming out that might be blinded, and then he wants to fall back and possibly call for a second flash from his teammates if he sees more people coming out long. If this is an opera, it's a little bit different. If this is an opera, obviously he can't take as many fights as once because he can only take one shot at a time. When he's doing that, he still wants to do something similar where he can, but instead of having to call for a flash before he takes a fight, he can just run up, run up backwards, like backwards so he doesn't get flashed, and take the peek. And again, you only really want to do this, you only really want the opera to do this if he has a good spawn for long. If he doesn't have that great of a spawn for long, then you can have the opera go somewhere else. But if the opera wants to peek long, he can do this, run up backwards and kind of peek the doors, and take a shot. The first person he sees. As soon as he takes a shot, it's really important that he doesn't re peek right away because there's a good chance that he's going to be re peeking into a bunch of people and a bunch of flashes. So, the first shot, whether he hits or he misses, he wants his teammate back here. He wants him to throw a flash and then he wants him to start running, getting close. Like, he wants him to throw the flash, but he also wants his teammate to come and help him because the opera's not going to be able to fight two, three, four people coming out long doors. So, so the guy who's, uh, they kind of want to trade spots where the opera's going to fall back a little and the rifler's going to come and fight the guys along a little. Like, the opera will fall back, maybe to car, and he'll be able to throw pop flashes too, so he can flash. So he turns into the supporter, and he flashes for the uh, for the rifler who can fight the rest of the guys along. Going flashbang. I don't know, something like that. Or even just like, Going flashbang. just like that. Yeah, that was a really good pop flash. Something like that. Um... That's the basic idea for holding long. It's really important that you just pick which which one you want to hold, though. Now, obviously, A gets a little difficult to play when you when people are coming cat. Like, say the mid guy's playing out here and he's calling, hey, they're coming cat, or he sees an Xbox smoke. It's a little harder, but 
you really don't want to try and hold long and cat at the same time because any coordinated team is going to hit them both together like they'll split long and long and cat so if you try and fight them together like a really common occurrence is for the long guys to be coming at long they won't see anything they fall back to cat because the teammate says they're coming cat they come to fight the guys at cat and then the guys are long around in the corner and they shoot them in the side so you really have to pick the one that you want to that you want to defend and it's usually better to just pick long just because it's a little bit easier to hold and it's a little bit of a tighter choke point but this guy's playing back at first so say they're doing a fast cat and say uh uh, say the mid teammate who's spotting cat says they threw an Xbox smoke. The first thing this guy wants to do is have a Molotov. It's always good have a Molotov or incendiary grenade if you're picky. Have one for each site, and you especially want this guy, the supporter at A, to have one because the moment like the Xbox smoke goes off, he he wants to throw a Molly like somewhere in there. Mollies are again the best grenade for stopping an execution, and it makes the terrorists look really fucking silly when they're just standing here. Uh, with fire in front of them because there's no chance they're going to be running out this isn't like a choke point where it, it leads immediately into the site they still have to cross quite a bit in order to get there so running through the molly doesn't benefit them very much and they don't gain very much they don't gain enough space for it to matter and for it to be worth them taking 50 damage but it's it's usually a good idea to throw a molly and then you can throw like a nade after it or even your other flash but you don't want to throw you don't want to waste your other flash right away because your teammate at long might need it like, for example, say you have a rifler peeking in the corner, he's kind of just patrolling it out, sees one guy, calls for a flash, peeks, kills one or two guys, sees more guys, so he's going to have to call for another flash from his teammate back here. So, this guy doesn't want to use all of his nades right away, especially his flashes. Uh, this guy, also, he can obviously Bang smoke the uh, smoke. smoke the choke point. But once he does all this, he doesn't. He, he, these guys don't really want to fight Cat. They want to. They want to fall back to long, especially if there's a bunch of people coming up Cat, because it's really hard to hold. Like I said, it's hard to hold A from two angles. Like two guys holding two angles is basically impossible. So these guys kind of want to fall back and just take control of long completely. That's how you counter terrorists taking map control or just people taking map control in general. Is you take map control somewhere else. So these guys can, can take a more dedicated. These guys can take control of long a little more aggressively, and they can have like uh, set up a crossfire like. I don't know, one guy playing this corner and one guy playing this corner. And just you just lock down long completely. And so, like, chances are you'll essentially you'll catch people coming out long and you'll be able to get them in a crossfire and you'll be able to kill them. And so say like the other three other teammates are up cat and they're already taking the site. Just give them the site, because in like a five V three or a four V three or uh in a five V three or four V three retake, it's like it's, it's totally in your favor, especially if you still have some nades to work with. And chances are you will because these guys won't have used any. If they, if they, uh, if the terrorists have gone three cat and too long or any any sort of cat play, then they'll all be over there. So these guys wouldn't have to have used most of their nades. And chances are they'll still have some flashes and maybe even a smoker and Molotov left. But generally, when they're so, that's it for the A guys. Uh, the mid guy, like I said, his job is mostly like sometimes this will be an opper and sometimes it'll be a rifler. If it's a rifler, he doesn't want to peek mid too aggressively because he doesn't want to peek into an op. But if it's an opper, the opper can just uh, play with an op like, like right here. If he's feeling like if he's feeling like if he's feeling confident, he feels like he can get the pick middle. He can pick peek middle maybe after a flash or something. But he doesn't want to just give them the free entry frag too easily. So if he if he loses this fight once, don't take it again. But this guy is going to be like, his job is going to be to rot he's going to be the rotator between A and B, and he's also going to be spotting for mid. Obviously if there's an Xbox smoke, he can't spot for cat, so if he sees an Xbox smoke coming, he's going to come and he's going to, in a CD spawn, and he's going to listen for them coming up cat, and he wants to make sure that he communicates to his teammates that he doesn't have eyes on mid anymore, so that these guys can be ready for the Molotov and some nades for cat. Uh, but this guy serves another purpose, which is that... If say there's say they do like something crazy like five long say they do just five long in general and these guys are these guys are fighting long this guy has a rifle here and he doesn't have an op uh, I don't know why I bought that if this guy's a rifle here chances are he's gonna be fighting to his death just based on how it's set up because this fallback is hard and this spot is really bad to be stuck in because you can get mollied and shit so it's usually a good idea for this guy to just coordinate his teammate with flashes and just fight to his death because chances are he'll get two or three blind as long as the coordination is good so. But if there's five, chances are this guy can get overrun. And say there's like, they get overrun to the point where there's still like, you know, three teammates, and this this guy has to fall back because this fight's really bad. You don't want to you don't want to take a fight versus three people down long like that. It's just a death trap. So you want to fall back into the site, or even fall back over here. But if they're still coming up long, the one disadvantage about sending so many people up long is that there's 
they're they're vulnerable to a pot flash for so long because they have to travel all the way up here. So uh, while those guys are traveling up long, if you can coordinate with the CD spawn guy, uh, he can throw a really easy flash like I don't know, like this. No, that didn't make it. There's a few. Like this guy can obviously flash. This guy can flash for himself, like this. Uh, but if you if you have a teammate playing with him, he can just uh, flash for him. Like uh, it still didn't go far enough. I think it's just a stand throw. Deploying flashbang. Yeah, that was good, or good enough at least. Maybe throw from a little bit a little bit further back. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of hard. That's a setup that that guy could work on. Yeah, that was good good enough, but. He can throw a really good pop flash like that, and it'll just rape all of them coming up long as long as the timing's decent enough. Again, the idea is this guy will just kind of jiggle in and out with his knife just to see just to see exactly where the guys are at before asking for the flash. Um, you don't want to throw this flash like when they're all still when they're all kind of get sitting in pit. Again, it's a long range engagement versus a lot of people, and there's a chance that one of the people will be like at the bottom of the pit, and the flash won't get them, and so it'll just be a, uh, it'll, you'll just be peaking lane. You'll just be peeking, and taking a bad engagement. So you want to, you want to, you want to time it right to where these guys are pushing up long when you throw the flash, and you'll catch again. You'll catch a bunch of them blind. So that's this guy's other job. The B guys, um, like it, there doesn't have to be two. Like you can, you can definitely play. It's definitely viable to play one guy B and have three at A, if they're going A all the time. Uh, in the beginning, I wouldn't recommend this so much, just because B's difficult to solo if they're pushing it hard a lot, if like if they're rushing it, or if they're going mid to be fast. So, you know, in the first couple of rounds, it's good to play together. But uh, in the early rounds, like depending if you think your team if think the terrorists are aggressive enough, you want this guy to like pre molly it, or at the very least, you want him to pre smoke it. Uh, but. You want again. You want to play together, and playing together here is a little bit differently. Playing together B is a little differently from playing together today because this choke points this choke points tighter, and there's only one of it. So, uh, standard setup is usually to have one guy one guy in closet and one guy somewhere in the site. The guy in site could play like a lot of different spots. Uh, one of my personal favorite spots to play is right here. Uh, it's like a headshot angle, and you can just duck in and out. You can also play right here. It's fine. You can play, you know, like, like this, like this, uh, like this, or even even back platform. Back plat's usually better if you if you have an opera here. Uh, you can also play a bait setup uh, with this guy in the corner, but you don't want to play this too much because this guy's kind of stuck. So, but you're setting up a really good crossfire, and you generally want uh, you generally want this guy to take first contact when they're coming through the when they're coming through the tunnels. Like this guy's job is also to listen for a rush. So if he's hearing a rush, he wants to, like, he's not exactly in the best position to throw nades to stop a rush, but this guy is, so he can communicate to him and he can throw uh, flashes and nades at them as they're as they're coming out and do a lot of damage that way. But yeah, it's usually best for this guy to take first contact and take the first fight, and then for this guy to peek a little bit delayed uh, to catch some people on the side. Also, a good pop flash for this guy to throw is to do this. If you look at it from the from the terrorist perspective, they see literally this much of it. So, it's a really it's a really good flash when you're catching the people coming out. But again, there needs to, the communication needs to be good here for this guy to see when they're coming out for him to throw that flash. And again, it's going to take a little while. So this guy has to predict when they're going to. This guy can't. This guy can't say throw the flash when they're out because by the by the time the flash actually pops, they're going to be past it. He has to tell them to throw the flash as they're coming out. So the timing is really important. And the communication has to be really uh, well coordinated here. But if the you know if the terrorists prove they're not coming B too often, then usually it's easy to f it's easy for someone to just solo B. And if they're soloing being if they're soloing B, they really don't want to play in the closet. It's too close of an angle. You want to play in a place where you have plenty of room, plenty of obstacles to dance around, plenty of room to throw nades and stuff, and uh, plenty of shit to hide behind. And plenty of places to fall back to, like always have the opportunity to fall back through the window if you're good, if you're getting overrun. But you want to be in a good position to where you can throw Throwing mollies, fire. you know, throw your molly, throw your flashes, throw your nades. Generally, you won't have the molly though because if you're if you're so line B, it's usually a good. It's, it's good to always have that molly at the beginning of the round so that you don't get rushed because getting rushed versus one person is basically a free sight for them. But 
As far as rotations, the B guys generally don't want to rotate through here because it takes longer. Like if it's if it's for sure an A hit, these guys don't want to rotate through here because it takes longer than for them to just come through here. And you're also exposing yourself to like a potential lurker that's anywhere around here that could just shoot you in the side of the head when you're not looking. So if it's communicated that's an A hit, especially if it's cat hit, these B guys want to come and they want to rotate like through here and they want to come up cat. And they kind of want to coordinate with this guy too. This guy has a, this guy's job is is to throw flashes for long, but if there's nobody else coming along, like, like if the A guys have got long under control, this guy doesn't want to rotate this way because this is a hard this isn't a good place to rotate when you see people coming from cat because they have all that space that they can shoot you from. So it's best to just try and retake from cat as a team. And uh, this guy can throw like deploying flashbang. Uh, let me see if I can actually throw it. Deploying flashbang. Yeah, that's too deep. Like as as his teammates are getting up cat, it's it's usually pretty common for someone to be just for one of their teammates to be peeking to holding the angle like this. So you wanna like you wanna have somebody flash for them. Throwing flashbang. You know, something like that. You want you wanna have somebody like you wanna have the the middle guy flash for your, your teammates before they peek cat completely. Like once they're here they can throw flashes for themselves, like once that flashes off and they peek here and they don't see anybody, then they can throw flashes for themselves like this. Uh, like that. They can flash themselves like cat, but they want to make sure that they're, like, again, they're playing coordinated because they want to take this retake really well. Because they're really the key to to a retaking the bomb site because they have to coordinate. Like, there's going to be three of them coming from cat and the other, the other guys are going to be coming from long. So it's like you kind of squeeze them back. To, squeeze them back. But their their job is to rotate up through cat, and then you just coordinate with each other and use your nades effectively in order to retake the site together. And chances are the long guys will have gotten uh, at least a frag or two from the guys at long, so it'll be in like uh, a four v three best case scenario, four v four, four v three, four v four, four v three, and uh, it it's it's usually it'll be it'll be tough, but if you play together, it's doable. And if you have the man advantage, it's definitely super uh, not too difficult uh, but it's important like if someone, if someone has a molly left this is a good molly and this is a good nade for right right in the middle of the site this will like wreck anybody that plants like plants in the site and hides in the site the molly and the nade will just wreck them and it'll be a bunch of free damage so it's usually a good idea if you have a molly or nade left to throw, throw nades like that <clears throat> And obviously, you know, same old flashes, flash like that, flash like that, or not like that, like this. You know how it is. Uh, but that's the basic idea for this setup. Um, the only thing I haven't covered is if they're going mid to B, and if they're going mid to B, it's like... It's... Definitely not the greatest for them because they're they're getting exposed to like a lot of different angles and there's a, a lot of opportunities for you guys to set up crossfires. But obviously the first person who's gonna spot them coming mid to B is the mid guy. And he wants to make sure that he doesn't play it like say he's playing right here and he starts say he's like spotting the doors and he sees the smoke come over. It's really important for him to not come like here. This is a really shitty position to be in, and you'll probably get just get flashed and get free fragged. Like it's it's not hard for them to just throw a flash like uh I don't know like that or like that like it's really not hard for the terrorists to just coordinate a push like that yeah that's a really good flash and you'll just get raped you'll be you'll be caught out of position and you'll be dead that's and you, like you don't want to come here you have it, like the fallback to here is really long, and chances are you'll be dead by then. You will, if you're gonna fall back from, if you see the mid to B smoke and you want to fall back, you want to fall back into CD spawn. Sounds a little sounds a little counterintuitive because you're falling back into a smoke, but you have a chance to set up crossfire with the A guys. Like say they're coming mid to B, chance that the first rotator will be the guy playing back, so he'll kind of rotate and play with his teammate here, and while the smoke is here, you can coordinate to where you coordinate with the B guys 
to where one guy is gonna one guy's gonna take contact from the door. One guy's gonna be in the site holding a flash for him like this. Deploying flashbang. Okay, that didn't go far enough. One guy's just gonna flash over the wall. Really good flash. And this guy can throw like say there's a mid to be smoke here. One of the guys here can flash out like this. And as you can see, it pops like in the smoke, sort of. The smoke will be a little deeper, but it'll kind of pop in the smoke. And then you can, like, here, I'll just throw a regular mid to be smoke. Playing down smoke. But again, one guy can take contact, like, get close, and uh, the other guy can throw a flash out. Yeah, it pops in the smoke. And it pops like right there. Really good pop flash. And it gives you a chance to set up this nasty crossfire with this guy. And these guys. It's literally a 180 crossfire. And depending on how many people are coming out mid to B and how many people get blinded, it can just be a fucking train wreck for them coming out, to be honest. It's like, it's not a. <laughs> You'll probably catch a bunch of people blind and get a bunch of free kills. So that's why mid to B is not necessarily the greatest. Especially when it's a 5v5. Like when there's less people and less utility, I guess I can understand it, but it's it's uh it's hard. It's a, it's rough. And of course there's always like the guy's CT spawn can also kinda go like this. Or his teammate can boost him up on this box and see over the smoke. As far as the long guy, uh he can go for like the fast flank through here like if he's if he's pushed up long like if he's in pit if he's in pit and then he comes and if he's in pit this is usually a faster rotate especially if you catch it in the early mid to B because you can catch a bunch of people in the back like the rotate from here to like here is way faster than the rotate from here all the way to here like it, by the time you by the time you've rotated it here, they'll already be in the site and they'll already be planting the bomb. So the long guys rotate will be through here, and he'll be a, kind of like a lurker or a flanker. And uh, as I said, this guy's rotate will be in a CD spawn with his teammate, and they'll play together. And these two guys will just play in the site. And uh, one guy will kind of take contact from the door or from the window while his teammate flashes for him and fight the guys coming mid to be. Um, after this guy throws a flash for his teammate, he doesn't really want to peek out because obviously if they're coming mid to B, chances are they're not all going mid to B and some will be in the tunnels. So he wants to like uh, be able to flash for his teammate. Chances are this will be the closet guy. So he can flash for his teammate and still deal with the people in tons. Like if he has a smoke left, if he has a smoke left or a flash left, he'll like stop these guys from coming out while they're fighting the guys coming out mid to B so he can mess with their coordination a little bit. That's the basic skeleton of the CT setup for Dust2. Uh, it's important to have. It's important to obviously have a have a good uh, setup that's ready to fight. See terrorists coming up cat all the time because that's one of the most common places they'll come. Like the t the two most common hits are like uh, some sort of a hit, some sort of a split coming from cat and long, and uh, mid to B. So you want to be well equipped, well equipped to know exactly what to do in those situations, and I think I've sort of outlined it now. It takes coordination and it takes chemistry with who you're playing with to kind of instantly have, like, you're not going to instantly have the good timing to know when to flash, when to throw the molly, uh, you know, when to throw the nades in general. So it'll take a little bit of practice, but once you've sort of coordinated with each other, uh, holds are extremely manageable. So, yeah, that's it.